In the last unit we looked at the use of the stair by component tool. You'll recall we accessed that from the architecture menu, circulation panel and stair, stair by component. Now stair by component is fine if you're producing relatively simple stairs. Um, so simple linear runs and landings as can be seen in the drop down image here. But if I go back to my model, if you're trying to produce any sort of freeform stair or landing, uh, something a little bit more creative, similar to the two examples I've just uh, created here, then stair by component is not going to be able to do that for you. That's where you need to use the stair by sketch. I'm just switch to a plan view. So whereas with the stair by component tool, we simply chose the two levels we wanted to span between and we let Revit place the components in, i.e. the runs and the landings. With stair by sketch, we're again going to tell Revit the two levels we want to span between. We choose a stair type, but then we are going to manually sketch where we want the riser lines to be. So each tread and riser. So these lines where I'm indicating my cursor would be the riser lines and also the boundary lines, the edge of the stairs or the landings. So two different types of lines we're going to use. Riser lines across here, basically the edge of the steps and boundary lines at the sides. Now I will repeat this next thing a couple of times during this unit, but it's really important. So I'll start off here. The boundary lines only go at the side of your runs and your landings. They don't go across the top or the bottom here. So at the bottom of your stairs, it will terminate with a riser line. And the same again at the top. Boundary lines only go at the side. If you try and enclose the whole stair or landing with boundary lines, when you come to define it, you will get an error message. It won't be able to create it because Revit will basically get confused. It's only expecting boundary lines on the sides and riser lines joining between them where you want the steps to be. Okay, to demonstrate the concept of stair by sketch, I'm just gonna start off by creating a very simple stair. Um, you can see my elevation here. I've got two levels to find in the project. Uh, they're only 500 mil apart vertically. Um, that's all we need just to make a simple stair, just to show you how this works. So let's go back to level zero. There's the two stairs I've already defined. I'm just going to produce a new one here just to show you how we actually use this tool. So remember, architecture on the circulation panel, stair by sketch. Again, we can choose different stair types. Remember, stair by sketch is similar to stair by component in the fact that uh, it produces system families. You can't take any of these stair models, if you like, and save them outside of this project. They exist only in the Revit project in which you create them. However, you can create as many types as you need and adjust the parameters accordingly. So stick with our private stair. Now, just before we start, check the levels. So we're going to go from base level, level zero, up to level one. I won't do any top offset for now. Put that back to zero. If we look up on the ribbon, we can see we're in sketch mode. Uh, classic sketch mode indicated by the green tick and the red cross. Now here's the important bit here runs, boundaries and risers. The two tools you're really interested in are the boundary lines and the riser lines. So let's start off putting some risers in. Hit riser. Here's our draw palette. So that allows you to choose how you want to actually define these lines. I'm just going to use a straight linear line. Okay. I'm going to put a riser line in there. Now again, it's telling us 
we've created one riser line so far and we have two remaining. We can choose what shape they need to be and where they are, but we have to create a three altogether because you look over in the properties palette, desired number of risers, three. Revit has calculated with this particular stair type to get from level zero to level one, we need three risers in total. So let's put the next one in. Again, I'm gonna keep this really simple to start with and then we'll look at more complex examples later on. Now the important thing um, is to make sure that your riser lines are equally spaced. Revit will let you um, create them so they're not equally spaced, but it will mess up the, the stringer at the size it tries to create them. So as you would expect in, in most stairs, your treads are going to be of equal distance. So let's just copy that down to create our third one. So we have three riser lines created, zero remaining. So we've got all the risers in we need. Now we need to switch to the boundary. Again, draw a palette there, however you need to define your boundary. Again, I'm gonna keep this really simple just to show you how this works. Then we'll do a more complex example in a minute. One there. And one there. Now I did say this before, but I will stress it again. These boundary lines only need to be, or only can be, on the side of your stairs or your landings. Do not start and end your stairs with a boundary line. Revit won't be able to uh, reconcile the sketch and create the geometry. Likewise, just it sounds obvious, but I, I will just stress it here. Your riser lines must connect with the boundary lines. So they can't stop short, they can't go past. So basically Revit is using this rule-based system of riser lines and boundary lines in order to generate the 3D geometry, which is gonna do in a second. So we've got our stair type, got our levels set correctly there in the properties palette. We've got the correct number of riser lines defined. Make sure you see zero remaining down there. And we've connected the riser lines at the sides with our boundary lines. All we need to do now is hit the green tick and Revit creates the stairs. It turns that sketch into 3D geometry. So let's switch to our 3D view. And there is the simple stair we've just sketched out. Forming landings using the stair by sketch tool is really straightforward. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So architecture menu, stair, stair by sketch. Gonna go from level zero up to level one plus an offset of 500. I've just added that offset in there just to make the stair a bit longer so we can fit a landing in. So that results in six risers being required. So switch to riser start adding them in first one in there it's going to copy that down copy again now i'm going to select all three of those riser lines and copy those together So I've got all the six rises in I need, zero remaining, so that, that's good. In the middle there is where I want to form the landing. So remember we've got to tie up the sides with boundary lines. Now I'm just gonna show you what happens if we take our boundary lines continuously between the top and bottom of the stair. Hit the green tick. Switch to a 3D view. There you can see our stair. Get slightly unexpected results due to the fact that all our treads are not equal, but we certainly haven't got what we would consider to be a landing in there. So let's go back, select our stair, edit sketch. 
Let's take off those boundary lines. To form landings, what we need to do is have a break in the boundary where we want the start and end of the landings to be. So go back to boundary. So we'll put a boundary line there. And now start a new segment of boundary line there. And again, and lastly, down there. So now on the sides of our stairs, we've got three segments of boundary line and it's the break between the boundary segments that tells Revit where you want landings to stop and start. So hit the green tick, go back to our 3D view and now you can see we've created a landing. Notice how the handrail follows the landing accordingly. Just go back to our plan view, select the stair, edit sketch. So just to reiterate, landings are formed by having breaks in the boundary lines and the break points will define where the landing starts and stops. So you always start your stair with a riser line. So each run starts and ends with riser lines and landings start with break points in the boundary lines. We started this unit by saying that the stair by sketch tool could be used to create more freeform stairs such as the example shown here. So that's what I'm going to show you now how to create. So let's do a basic tapered stair. Create a new one. So let's get a little bit of free area in our model. So architecture, stair by sketch. Going to stick with these levels, level zero to level one plus 500. As we saw before, we need six risers to get up to that height. Go to our riser line, add one in, add a second one in. Use the copy tool, put multiple on. There's our six riser lines in place. Let's put a boundary line in. Now let's say we want our stair to be tapered. All we need to do is place our boundary line accordingly. Let's do quite a, a sharp taper there. Now we need to trim those excess riser lines. Revit will not accept this sketch as it stands. So I'm going to use the trim extend multiple elements tool. So I want to trim to this line and I can do a fence and select all the things I want to trim in one go. Brings those back. So we've met the sketch criteria that Revit needs, i.e. we've got our boundary lines at the side. It doesn't matter that they're skewed to form this taper. And we've got the correct number of riser lines spanning between the two boundary lines. Go ahead and select the green tick and Revit creates our tapered stair. Just spin that round and there we have it. If I go back to our plan view Just take a look at this example here, just to explain how you create these. I'm going to go back and edit this sketch, so we'll, we'll go and see the sketch lines that make this up. Really straightforward, again, boundary lines at the side. And here you can see that each tread is made of two riser lines joined together. Again, you could have more than that, you could bring that down and back up again. 
So you can have as many segments of riser lines all joined together as you need and Revit will read that as one step as long as you've got the boundary lines at the side to form stop ends to the riser lines. So that's how you form these sort of L-shaped stair assemblies. If you create stairs and landings using the stair by component tool, you can actually backward engineer and convert those stair components to a stair by sketch so that you can then edit their shape. I'll just show you how that works now. So I've deleted all the previous examples out of the model. Um, we're going to create a simple stair by component this time just to show you how you can backward engineer it. So we need 11 risers. So zoom in here. Let's put a landing in. So remember how that works in the previous unit, the stair by component tool. Hit the green tick. Zoom all. And there. is our stair and landing. Now if we want to let's say taper that stair or change the shape of the bottom, bottom tread we need to convert that stair by component into a sketch in order to change those sketch lines. Thankfully Revit includes a facility to convert these stair components back into a sketch. So first of all select edit stair select the run we're interested in and if you look up on the ribbon menu we've got a tool there convert to sketch based now you do get a bit of a warning saying this is irreversible it sounds a lot worse than it is don't worry about it just close the dialog box it's now converted it and now you have the option to edit that sketch I'll just go into a plan view it'll be easier to, to work on zoom on in so there's the bottom component of the first run that we converted to a sketch now we can edit that sketch and now you can see the green boundary lines and the black riser lines that Revit is using in its rule based system to create that geometry so we can edit that accordingly so I'm just going to add a taper remember your rise lines have to span to the boundary lines and just for good measure let's put a curved bottom step in so there's our new riser line at the base we need to delete that previous one extend the run line Okay, hit the green tick to remake the stair. It's now made a new component and green tick again to make the final assembly. And switch to our 3D view. And there is our tapered bottom run, including a curved bottom step. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.